Hey all, welcome back to the channel where we're all around boosting your productivity. And in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to create a fantastic Outlook booking page, allowing your colleagues and customers to go to a single web page and book that all important time in your diary, cutting out all of those emails. And by that, I had my own experience recently. I tried to organize a meeting with one of our customers. It took about six hours to do. The reason why, I sent some times and dates that suit me, they didn't suit the customer. They sent back times and dates that suited them, and it didn't suit me. You know where this goes, right? We go through this problem every single day. And I thought to myself, there's gonna be a better way than buying another app to do this inside of Microsoft 365. And that is exactly what I found. The Outlook personal booking page, allowing you to create a personal booking page for you share it via that web link and allow people to book time in your diary. And also there are additional security controls in there to ensure you won't have any random or spam messages coming through into your Outlook calendar. So you're thinking, how easy is it to set up? And I would say it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And that's the benefit. No IT admins involved, no credit cards needed to buy another app. We can simply set it up via a single web link you can add it into your signature or just copy it into one of your emails the next time you're organizing that meeting. And the great news is, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create it right from the scratch all the way to sharing it with your customers and colleagues. So, let's dive in. So to get started and set up that Outlook booking page, head to office.com and sign in with your Microsoft 365 account. Now once you're in there, we're gonna to need to access Outlook on the web. The best way is go to the app launcher and then select Outlook from the app launcher itself. This will fire up Outlook on the web. You can actually use this for any emails or calendar management moving forward. Now in here, we're gonna to wanna to create ourselves a new private booking page. So we're gonna to go to the calendar icon on the left-hand side of Outlook, and within there, there's a link to go to my booking page. Now once we select that link, it'll open in a new web browser tab. And as you can see on the screen here, I have now an introductory message, which allows me to get some of the basics pre-set up that I could use moving forward. So I'll go ahead and note got it on here, and it will create me a booking page with one single appointment type known as office hours. But interestingly, we can begin to customize this page. The first thing that you're gonna to want to do is create your meeting types. So generally, the best way I can recommend to use this is to give timed intervals. So maybe a 30 minute meeting with you, 45 minute and 60 minute are good options. That means you don't have to create different types of meeting to suit different types of meeting types that you have within Outlook. It's a very simple way that can be adapted and also many other paid apps that use this capability use exactly the same functionality. So let's go ahead and firstly create our new meeting types. All we need to do is click on the plus icon next to public because these will appear on our booking page allowing people to book time under these items. And then on the next dialogue, we can begin to create our meeting type. I'm now gonna give it a title and a description. And with that done, I can also set locations. Ideally, if you're working in an office, you could set a location, but instead I use a lot of virtual meetings. And as you can see, we can set a Teams meeting by default that'll be immediately scheduled once it goes in our diary. So I'm gonna leave Teams meeting being selected as our meeting location. The next we can select is the duration of the meeting. Now this is a 30 minute meeting type. As I click in a drop down, you can see we can choose from different values. I'm quite happy with 30 minutes for this meeting, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. And then also we're gonna see the ability to set a public or a private meeting type. Now I'm gonna leave it as public, meaning when people access my booking page, this is one of them they can select from without having to have a unique link to one of my private meeting types. Now for your scheduling, it immediately defaults to your meeting hours that you typically follow. Now, some people have been stuck on this in the past. They don't know effectively what those hours are. If you want to check that, click on the hyperlink to the right-hand side and you can go into the settings. Now on this page here, as we can see, it doesn't actually show the hours of your meetings. You have to go down to work hours and location and you can now set up when your calendar is available from. Now you might feel that 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. is just not your working hours. So you can adjust this here to have your calendar booking page fully aligned to it. However, typically I don't do this on my booking page. 
Instead, what I will actually do is go back into my bookings page and I will use custom availability hours. In here, that now means I can actually set times for my meetings. So I don't really like meetings at 9 a.m. as soon as I arrive into the office. So I might effectively have 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. as my available meeting times to allow people to book that in my diary Monday to Friday. So you can adjust these for this particular meeting type to meet your need. Now with that done, you can also select from some advanced options. Now this is quite important because you're most likely not gonna want a meeting straight after another meeting. That's just not very good for the mindset, right? And changing that focus for your next meeting. So here we're gonna put some additional buffer timing. I'm gonna set that it needs to be 30 minutes before and after the meeting to allow me to take my notes and get ready for any further meetings. And as you can also see, we can set a minimal lead time. So I don't want someone booking something in my calendar within one hour. I'm actually happy for them to book it in one day. So that's a one day lead time to book a meeting with me. The maximum 90 days is a little extreme. I'm gonna bring that down to 30 days. Now with this set up, I can go ahead and then click on save. And this will now show on our public booking page. Now what we also need to do is go ahead and change office hours because office hours shouldn't be shown on the booking page. We have our new replacement. That's just a Microsoft demo, right? So we can go into the free dot menu and we can go ahead and delete that. Once we delete that meeting type, we only then have our 30 minute meeting type. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create another one for 60 minutes in exactly the same way. Hey all, there's no need to adjust your YouTube sets. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about what we do as a company. So your 365 coach has been set up to help you, your team, and your business succeed when it comes to Microsoft 365. Whether you wanna take our training and take your expertise to the next level, or have one of our team, including myself, help you on that journey with getting things right in Microsoft 365, we can certainly do that as well. So if you wanna find out a little bit more what we do, head to the link below. And not only that, you'll even find a free ebook you can download with loads of tips and tricks in Microsoft 365. So let's get back to that video content and keep empowering you to do more in Microsoft 365. So with that done, you're probably wondering what on earth are the private meeting types? Well, for that, it's really good for bespoke or unique meetings. For example, if you're a team manager, you need to have one-to-ones every single month with your team. They won't want to come in and book a generic meeting with you in your diary. Yes, that works, right? But you may want a different type of meeting that's already gonna be preset in your calendar. So let's go ahead and create one for a one-to-one -one with a team member. All we need to do is click onto the plus button within the private section, give it a title and description, much like we did previously. And we can also set a color-coded category on this meeting inside of Outlook. Go to the category drop down, select new category, and I'm gonna add team management into here. So it's a really clear category that I'm applying within Outlook. Once I've done that, the category will be automatically applied to that meeting type. When we're ready, go ahead and click on save, and we now have a new private meeting type. So that is now available here. Now, in terms of booking meetings for those one-to-ones, we're gonna explain that shortly. But also we can make changes to our bookings page although there's not many changes we can make. Now at the top of the screen, you can actually go ahead and click on the free dot menu and change your banner image. Unfortunately, it's only supported at the moment to use the standard Microsoft banners rather than anything personal. But I can go ahead and use the pictures of some mountains. Not that it really matters, right? It's still actually providing the purpose for our booking page. Now with that, we've now completed our booking page. We need to tell people about what's going on, right? So how can we share this page with others is now the key part of this. So very simple to do, click in the share drop down and you will see some options. We can copy the link, share via email or add to an email signature, all pretty self-explanatory. Add to email signature or add it into your signature within Outlook. That means instead of copying links every time, you can just let the person know an email, they can book a meeting with you with the link in your signature nice and easy. If that though doesn't suit your needs, go into share and you can also share via email. This will send a web link out to the person that you're gonna define. But I'm not gonna do that either because that's not a very personal way of booking meetings. So instead, let's click into share and click copy link. 
And now if we open an incognito or private browsing window, we can go and have a look at how your booking page looks. And once we load it, we can see we're prompted to either sign into Microsoft 365 work or school account, or we can continue as a guest. So this doesn't require you to have a 365 account. It simply means if you sign in, you become authenticated and are trusted to book a meeting in your diary. There'll be no code generated later for you to need to input to validate who you are. So I'm going to go ahead and put continue as guest as most cases, people are not going to be signing to a 365 account. So when we do that, we now have the ability to select our meeting type and see the availability in Lee's calendar where we set up the booking page for. So we can click into each of these and book a meeting. I'm going to go ahead and set a meeting for 9.30 on Friday. Click on next and you can see I have to now define the person's name, their email address and notes. The email address is important because a code is sent to that email to validate who that person is. So super important to actually get that right. If not, that meeting will not be organized in your calendar. As we can see now, I filled in that form and it's now going to process that booking. And it's also now going to send an email address to the email I specified here. And I can input that into this dialogue without doing that, as I mentioned, there won't be any meeting in your diary. So it's super important if the person hasn't signed into Microsoft 365 work or school account, they will need to do this process. So you may be wondering what happens then with your private meetings? Well, it works a little differently. We mentioned earlier that you can only book that with a link. It's not gonna show on your public booking page. So all we can do is go back into that web browser in non-incognito. I can then copy this link I can either copy the link entirely or just a single use link that expires after it's used and then go ahead and once again, copy, paste that into one of your emails or put it into another incognito window. The difference now, of course, is rather than having a selection that you can choose from, you're immediately going to have that meeting type for your one-to-one. -one. So you have to run through the same process. If you have a work or school account, you can authenticate and skip the code. If you're external, and use one of those guest accounts, i.e. outside of 365, such as Gmail, you have to do a verification code to go through that process. So it's a little different in how that works, but it does mean you can use that link type for specific type of meetings outside of what you're effectively providing publicly. So let's look at this as an end-to-end. -end. We now have our public booking page, and I'm actually signing to an account with Microsoft 365 to make this nice and easy. I have a link to the booking page that we have available to book a one-to-one, -one, so I can go ahead and book an available time. You can also see, because I'm authenticated, it also shows when I'm available in my own calendar in 365. I can click Next, and it can automatically pre-populate those fields, the email address and the person's name. I click on book here, we won't be prompted to input that code. Be automatically booked into the calendar for both Lee, who the booking page relates to, and also in my own calendar. And that will work in exactly the same way as any other meeting. Let's go and check that out. And here we go. No difference to any other meeting is actually put into my calendar, shows the person who's affected the calendar, it's been organized within, and includes additional details. Now at this point, there's also a link to manage the meeting. You can click on that link and the person that's been invited can also reschedule and have different options available to them. As we can see, the options are here. We can reschedule, cancel the meeting and so forth. So you've now seen the power of the booking page. It took us 10 to 15 minutes to set up, probably take you even less time or it's shown in this video. But at the end of it, you're gonna have that booking page. You can send an email, put into your signature and I have all of those meetings arranged without any of that hassle. Simply send a link to the page, they can book in at a time that suits. Even better, during 365, it even confirms when they're available to make it super easy. So you can get using this capability very easily without any IT involvement and take all that pain away when it comes to managing your meetings.